came. Um, so this is uh, a science lesson for primary, which is uh, key stage two to key stage three. So uh, I will be delivering the lesson, and my name is Miss Sanaj Payet. Dear parents and children at home, welcome once again to our life lesson sessions of teaching for the primary. As we explained earlier, our sessions are not for one specific level, but instead we try to accommodate across level so that every child at home can benefit from something. As you have seen, our session is going to be scientific today. So let's get ready for some scientific thinking and get working. One of the most basic questions science answers is, what is life? How do we know something is alive? Pretty sure you have asked that question to your parents many times, right? Life is the name or label to separate things that are animate from inanimate. Natural objects such as plants and animals and inanimate, which are man-made objects like houses and windmills. So these are only a few examples. And we will learn a little bit more. Now, we have some. Can you name them? And we will do it together. What can you see now? That's a baby. The baby is crawling. Ah, that's a nice one. Two together. A dog and a cat. A bird. Do you know that bird? Ah, that's a minor bird. Okay, so the one here is fish. Okay, we have two fish in that picture. Now, that's a nice one, a nice tomato plant with a tomato ready to eat. Now, this one is a butterfly, followed by a bee. Now, let's go over the list that we've seen. We've seen the crawling baby, the cat and the dog, the tomato plant, the minor bird, the fish in the pond, the bee on the flower. And what are they? They are all living things. So, they, which means that they all share the same characteristics or properties. Okay? And this will kind of define life for us. Now, can you make a list of your own? I know that all around you there are so much and you can exhaust the list. So, how do we know something is living? All living things are characterized as being able to do seven things. These are usually remembered by the mnemonic Mrs. Nurg. And you will like this one. Okay, Mrs. Nurg. Anything coming to your mind? Now, can you guess what these letters stand for? So we'll just keep this aside. And we've gone back to it afterward. Now, all those, uh, the crawling uh, baby, the bee, the fish, what 
do they have in common? Of course, they move. They eat, okay, which we mean feed, or other word which we can use, nutrition. They also reproduce. They are sensitive, meaning they can feel. They excrete, that is, pass out waste material. They also grow. They respire. Okay, another word which you can use also is breathe. Okay, so now, like I said before, we will move back to Mrs. Nurg. Okay, now you will know a little bit more what I was saying. Movement. Okay, in movement, do you see the first letter? Which has been highlighted? The M. Okay, in red. So, our first letter. Movement means animals move to find food and keep away from predators, whereas plants move to face the light. Reproduction. We are now. Reproduction is the ability to produce offspring to keep the species in existence. Very important, to keep the species into existence. Sensitivity, the S. Responding and reacting to the environment. Nutrition, the N. Now, animals need food for respirations, whereas plants need minerals from the soil. Excretion, e, getting rid of waste. Respiration, R, turning food into energy. Growth, okay, G, growing larger and stronger, which means becoming adult size. So, Mrs. Nerg, this is a way for you to remember the seven points. Now, let's look at some non-living things, okay? We've seen the living things, so it's important also to know the non-living things. So here we have the mountain, the book, the logs, the car, fire, we have the windmill, and we have the river. All of them, they are examples of non-living things. The artificial or man-made non-living things, like a book, a car, are clear to us. But what the, about the ones that occur in nature? Like fire, it has some of these characteristics, but not all. So it is not a living thing. Therefore, water flowing in a river, wood logs cut from a living tree, mountains, sunlight, and wind are all examples of non-living things. Now we're going to look at some concrete examples. I know at home you have lots of examples around you. So here I have my sanitizer, an example of non-living thing. I have my phone, 
Oh, I have this nice stuffed toy. Okay, again, it is a non-living thing. Oh, my umbrella. It is handy, both on sunny days and rainy days. Okay, again, it is an example of a non-living thing. Okay, and at home again, you can, like I've said, you can list some more examples. Now, let's go back to the living things. Okay, remember, we've looked at Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Nug. So, what do we call these seven things? We've seen them in Mrs. Nurg. Okay? So, the things have something in common. Now, what do they have in common? It starts with a letter C. Very good. I think you have nailed it. It's characteristics. Okay, so it is the seven characteristics of living things. Okay, we've previously seen it in Mrs. Nerg, and we will just go over it once again to ensure that you really understand them. Okay, we'll start with movement. Animals move to find food and keep away from predators, whereas plants move to face the light. Reproduction, the ability to produce offspring to keep the species in existence. Sensitivity, responding and reacting to the environment. Nutrition, animals need food for respiration, whereas plants need minerals from the soil. Excretion, getting rid of waste. Respiration, turning food into energy. And growth, growing larger and stronger, becoming adult size. Okay, so when you take it as Mrs. Nerg, I know that it will be easy for you to understand, to follow, as well as to remember. Okay, now I have an exercise for you. Okay, the task is to decide whether the above things are either alive or not alive. Alive, living things, not alive, non-living things. Okay, and you're going to put them in the correct box. And while you are doing it, remember Mrs. Nerg. Okay, so I want you to, on, your, on a piece of paper, you will draw your table like this one, here. So I think you have already drawn your table. So we will go back to our list. Spider. Where will you put spider? Spoon. 